Hey guys, Mystic here. In today's podcast, I'm joined by Savix, Stoops, and Venruki to discuss the current issues with the LFG system and the need for solo queue to be implemented into the modern age of WoW. This is something we are really passionate about and absolutely believe needs to happen. So if you care about the future of WoW PvP and want to see it grow and flourish in the way that it can, please be sure to share this video with your friends and get this conversation out there, as without your help, we won't have our voices heard. Let's start by talking about the LFG system, and obviously Stoops' video kind of covered a lot of the issues with it, but if we just kind of want to recap what the biggest problems are with it, because obviously that's going to lead into the conversation of solo queue, so if anyone wants to jump in and kind of summarize what they feel are the biggest problems with the LFG system right now. Uh, probably the biggest problem is just finding someone to queue with that's your similar rating uh, i mean it sounds pretty simple like you li well, right now basically what happens is you 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 list yourself you uh, list what you're looking for or you can try to find what you're looking for in the list but the problem is um basically people can lie about you know what rating they actually are what experiences they actually have is a relevant experience um and it feels like it's on the player to do a lot of due diligence to actually find someone who's compatible and that can take a really long time so you spend all this time all this effort trying to find someone you think will actually work out and then it ends up not working out and you have to go back and sit and wait and queue up again and it just feels like there could be a way better system for people to actually find relevant partners yeah one thing i'll say is that even as a player with a bunch of experience myself trying to use the lfg system like on an alt as a player that has a bunch of experience i will still struggle myself <laughs> do, you, do you guys have similar experiences? yeah like as, like, Damn. You have all these accolades and you try to use lfg but still it's not enough i think people also say like you guys are streamers you guys have all the achievements it should be easy for you to get like to find people to play with but it's still very hard and for the people that don't even have that like doesn't stream or doesn't have achievements it's harder i was talking about this last night on my stream which is funny uh it's really weird because as you get higher rated as well the system becomes has you know just has less and less value because you just won't find anyone around your experience if you're trying to queue with people around your experience but on the low end you need to have experience to use the system the game has been around for so long that you need to have these achievements so then you have to go out and get the achievements and then once you get them the system is no longer useful either way so it's like on both ends at the top end and at the low end it's not very effective also i would say that the approach by players to how they use the system has significantly changed over the years they treat it almost like a solo queue system they get in they'll leave after a loss and they look for a new team or a new group they just dip right away so i think the intent like there is a people problem. People always refer to that. It's not an LFG problem. It's a people problem. They're not willing to stick it out and stay. We'll get into that. What I think about that in a little bit, but yeah, the way people treat the system as well, they're just willing to leave after a single loss. This is what I hear a lot. You know, it's what I've experienced. There's actually a video of Channel. He gets into a game with the Rep Paladin. He's kind of like undercover. It's a great video, and uh, the Rep Paladin lies about his, his CR. The first, the first LFG game he grabs, the guy lies about his CR. Tells him, hey, this is what you have to do in LFG. He bops the opener, gets purged instantly, and dies. And then he leaves after one loss, blaming Channel. Doesn't know Channel is either. So it's just it's just an amazing story because that's the reality of anyone's experience that uses the system. And uh, you know, I think it is the biggest problem in World of Warcraft today. Lots of great endgame content. Developers spend so much time making it all, and then your experience is doing laps in Orbos. Yeah, a lot of people don't even get to experience the full PvP before they quit too. A lot of my viewers or the whole community, they want to get in, but the barrier to the entry is like so difficult. Other games you could just play, but yeah. Right, and so that's where solo queue comes in, right? That's how we expect just without having to spend time fixing the LFG tool and fixing all of that. Obviously, Stoops' video did a great job of outlining how that could be improved, but just implementing a solo queue system is supposed to fix those problems. Before we hop onto this topic, I just want to talk about the importance of this topic because I think this should be a topic of discussion on everyone's mind right now because everyone that watches these videos, right, they're interested in PvP. So if you're a streamer that streams PvP, if you're a tournament player, whatever, our audience is purchasing, playing the game for PvP mostly. And if they're if they're coming to us and saying, hey, I can't play the game that you stream or you play professionally, 
or you know i watch all your guides skill cap it's great but i can't play the game that should be on everyone's mind right because they're not able to actually play so that's why this topic should be at the up you know the top of the list for everybody because our entire audience is just not able to play and how crazy is that like that shouldn't be the issue they're experiencing the issue they should be experiencing is like learning the game getting better improving you know what when should i use my trinket i watched your guide skill cap you know like all those types of things not hey, i'm just sitting in lfg you know 10 hours a day so solo queue would give people the opportunity to play whenever they want and start working on some of the things that they've seen on streams guides and heard from others so yeah yeah, yeah. I was going to say, that. I think it's important to note, uh, we are talking about the significance uh, of LFG and how helpful it could be for PvP, but it's not just a PvP thing. Like, it's obviously huge in PvP, maybe the most important, but it's also a huge issue for even raiding uh, Mythic Plus as well. So the system overall for just everyone in World of Warcraft, uh, they could benefit if it was overhauled and improved. Yeah, definitely agree. Uh, I think that might bring us onto the other point where we can make a comparison to other games where the ability to solo queue is pretty much something that's a given in every other modern game. Um, obviously, WoW was created as an MMO, but nowadays it doesn't really play like an MMO anymore. You know, you, you have the ability to queue for a dungeon finder and stuff like that, but the true end game content, so mythic raiding, mythic raids, uh, mythic dungeons, PvP, um, you cannot solo queue for any of this. And there aren't really other games like that nowadays where you can't do that. I think the average gamer has changed so i know people with what you just said their response is going to be well it's an mmo and that's what makes wow unique but i feel like what players want in a video game just the different genres of gaming kind of fall out of like a fad a little bit and i think it's important for wow to evolve to what players want right it's about like satisfying your consumer what do they want out of the product and i feel like they just want to if we really cared about the MMO aspect, then there'd be things like the auction house, right? Where you just buy all of your enchants on the auction house. You don't even know who made the enchant anymore. Why is that not something that needs to get fixed? It's an MMO. There's sharding that exists in the game where I can be on the same server server as you and I don't even see you, right? So these are all these other things that don't play like a, a real MMO in some ways. But then when it comes to the end game content, while you purchase the game, oh, well now we have to preserve the MMO aspect. I think that ultimately, solo queue is an option for players that you would do like in your free time like any other game you know but if savix or ben's like hey you want to go play league duos i'm like sure let's do it that sounds like a great time together i'd always prefer to play with my friends if i could but does that exactly. mean i have nothing to do in world of warcraft that's really fun no one's buying the game for torgast no one's buying the, the game for the mob i mean if you are that's a i would say there's much better options out there <laughs> out there for you uh, in terms of your, how you can spend your money, your time. So I think that I know people are saying, well, that it's an MMO and that solo queue shouldn't be involved. You should be doing some of the work. I think people will still do the work. You might meet somebody through solo queue. Maybe I meet a mage. I get paired with a mage. I'm a warrior. I really wanted to play, you know, WMP, really wanted to. I've been wanting to do it still in the game right now. So why, you know, why could if I meet a mage, and we actually get matched up. And he's at my MMR and he's not bad. Dude, let's group up and let's do some threes. I'm down, man. Like, sorry. Um, when I started playing PvP seriously, I was around like WAD. And I played a red then and nobody really wanted a queue. So since I couldn't play, I just played skirmish all day. And I found this other priest and he was really good. So we added each other and we got to like 2.4 together. And I remember, I don't know, just that having that aspect to meet someone around your MMR and being able to queue with them, it feels great. So if we had solo queue, that would open up a lot more opportunity where you get to find players around your MMR or CR. And then outside of that, you guys can like duo queue or add each other. It's just a better way to find more people too, I feel like. Okay, I think um, a good way to go to build upon that would be to now talk about why people are against it. It's, it's hard to really know why, I mean, I've heard some different arguments for it, but I, I can't really imagine a reason why just if, if solo queue was added on its own and nothing else gets removed, I don't really see the problem with it. I feel like there's some people who talk about, I mean, you talked about League of Legends a little bit as an example, like in League of Legends, you're not really tied to one champion, right? So 
Uh, a problem with WoW is like, let's say right now uh, you could queue up in solo queue and you could kind of pick the healers that you wanted to play with, uh, the, the melee that you wanted to play with, the range that you wanted to play with. Is anyone really going to click on the, the Mistweaver box right now? I, I don't think so. So if you play a Mistweaver, I mean, there of course there's ways around this, but I think that's one thing. Like the, the game is very composition based. Um, so people don't want to run around with like unideal compositions and uh, maybe things that don't synergize well together, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, I have, uh, I feel like to play devil's advocate to that just a little bit. Um, I feel like if it, like right now, what we see is people are very like kind of stuck to the meta, right? Like you see a lot of Holy Paladin Fire Mage, right. it's kind of all that happens. Yes. If there was solo queue where people were kind of forced to mix and match, you wouldn't be running into these situations where you're queuing against people that are exclusively playing the most overpowered right. compositions, right? You'd right. Have a lot of you'd see a lot of different uh, comp options, which would make it maybe more interesting. A hundred percent. And the thing I is, I feel like there is already counter comps in WoW. Well. I know yeah. people say, "What if I get bad comp?" But if yeah. I just queue, I might just queue into something I get straight up counter to, and I have no control over that. So solo yeah. queue would be the same thing, no? And yeah. to that point, what you said is like. Nobody's checking the Mistweaver box, essentially. Well, that, what happens to that Mistweaver? He just doesn't get to play at all then because yeah. no one wants to play with him. So that because sucks. There, because there's pre-made comps, you don't get to play. I feel like solo queue, I would be in the big favor of it having different ratings. You switch spec, and that would be the most sense because let's say you're a holy a rep paladin and you get the 3k in solo queue. You could just hypothetically switch to HPAL one day and just kind of screw everyone over. So you'd have to have, when you switch specs, separate separate bracket and that yeah. dude, i would love to try out different specs for fun you know it gives you the ability to not Wait, make so several... people don't get confused so if you're playing like red paladin and then you switch over to holy you would start with the new cr on that holy spec right exactly but that. you could try out different things and to that note of like to like the note of you know why arena's compositions there's a lot of comps that would work like, for example, I always, you know, I always go into some streams and I hear, oh, like, Thug Cleave sucks, right? Like, it's just so bad. Imagine if you got that. Thug Cleave sucks in, which is, for those of you listening, like, Hunter Rogue, right? Bad into the current meta, but it doesn't mean they don't have synergies as a comp. And if everything's kind of randomized, what are really bad comps? I'm thinking of a couple. Like, what are the chances that you literally hit Rogue Warrior, for example? And you've seen that, like, like Outlaw Rogue and, like, Fear Warrior, sell that in Legion. But there's not much synergy there, right? But a lot of comps could work, right? It's not like you only have Rogue Mage. Rogue Mage is just the best comp with the current, right. like with the current comp matchups, the current meta. It's the only real Rogue comp that you have that's good. But there are other ones that have some synergy, and I'd be way more interested to see people make things work. I heard people mm -hmm. suggest the idea: well, what if you you selected the classes you want to queue with, or it gives you pre-made set comps? I don't actually want that. Yeah, I, like I don't anyway. want that either. I, I like, like the, the randomness of yeah. it and just who can make who can make it work. Who can make what happen. work? Yeah, and good yeah. players will find their ways to make it work and push up, and it'll just filter out. I feel like. Yeah, and classes will get filtered as well. Like mm -hmm. people, what about, you're not going to be the high. There's not. There's how many fewer warriors do we expect to be at high ratings in solo queue? Maybe not, I don't know. That's what okay, I here, here, here's my well. pitch on that. Here's my pitch on that. So I added a new like theory into this. What if they give the top five class specialization like a new reward, like a title? It, it, it could be separate. It doesn't have to be a sinful gladiator. It could be something else. But like top five of that class player gets a title. And then that would make it where like Ben even said, who wants to play with Mystery, right? But then there are really good misviewers who do really well out there and they deserve to be on the spotlight. But if their class sucks, like all the H pals or R shamans, they'll just take all the spots, right? And yeah. then they get all the titles. Do you guys want to talk about the implementation on AT? I like, don't know I, how they did uh, it. So the way that they handled it, I mean, it was implemented there, God knows, like seven, eight years ago. I'm not sure how long ago. It was quite a while ago. And they literally did the things that you were saying. Um, the comps were completely random. It was locked into melee cost the healer. And it would just be completely random what you play. Um, and the rewards were given out to the, like the top 10 or whatever of each class. Obviously, we're saying that spec. Oh, wow. But that's how they did it. So um, it definitely is sort of the best way to do it. You end up getting these people. It's like we said, no one wants to play with a Mistweaver right now. No healer wants to play their actual Mistweaver. They'd rather reroll and play Holy Paladin. But what mm -hmm. if you're incentivized by the fact that if you are the best of your class, 
or the best of your spec, you're going to get a reward. And so yeah. tell me, if you're a Fury Warrior and you love playing a Fury Warrior, well, guess what? You can push you can still play your class. And play your Fury yeah. Warrior and not feel bad about it because yeah. you're competing to be the best of your spec and, as opposed to being the... I love that. Spec. You also have a situation, though, as well, right? Where, let's say you're Ven, you have a Windwalker, but then you know that you get a reward for playing Mistweaver and there's a separate CR for that. You're like, you know what, dude, I might try to push my Mistweaver and see how far I can get on this. So you'd have... Because you know the fun, yeah. because you know mm -hmm. that there's rewards for every the top ten of what Miss Weavers, for example, you'll have more and more people. Wait, I can try to get top ten, and then that will it'll naturally boost players like participation on that class because they know that it's an underplayed class and they can get a reward on that. So it'll be more competitive in that aspect. You'll get more Miss Weavers because there's a reward for that. So people can switch specs and try it out to see how far they could get. I mean, at the end of the day, it's just about creating content in the game that people enjoy and enabling, like, it's fun. And you're just enabling people them to do that. Spam Q and play, man. I was going to reiterate how important, uh, like, spec specific rating uh, really is. Because I feel like there's so many people, maybe you're a rep paladin main and uh, you want to try out holy paladin or, you know, you're a shadow priest and you want to try out healing. It's so punishing right now if you've never played a healer before, you push 3000 rating as a shadow priest and then maybe you want to like dip your toes and playing holy priest or discipline priest, but you really can't without jeopardizing, you know, your, your CR. And I feel like it really, it limits um, the overall player pool as well, because I feel like people would be willing uh, to play different specs and learn different specs if they didn't have to jeopardize, you know, uh, the, their main rating. And it would give just more more bodies in the game that you could queue up with, more healers you could find, more DPS you could find, and just overall would be really good. 100%. Playtime too. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many people are willing to make a second monk or priest to play a different spec? Like, because that's what you'd have to do, right? You're not going to jeopardize your main rating. You're going to make a second one. That's what, you know? How many people are willing to make a second class versus just saying, oh, I'll just try, I'll try progressing on this. Oh, you need yeah. a healer? Don't worry, I'll swap your 1600. I can, I'll heal. I just feel right. like that's what it's all about, man. Like, I get it's an MMO, right? I understand that. I know that's the, the concern from players. It's an MMO. But at like, what point do we, like, at what point do we just say, you know what? It's an MMO, so we'll exclude a large portion of our audience. Just at the just to preserve the fact that it's an MMO, just to preserve, not a, let's let's exclude a large portion of the player pool to keep the keep it an MMO. It's like, dude. I think that's one. An MMO doesn't have to be too. unfun. It doesn't have to be unfun. Yeah, right. It people think that game. if Solo Q comes in, no one's gonna queue teammate it, but teammate it will still exist. And like Steve said earlier, I love playing my friends, but when they're not on, I want to be able to play and just practice. Also, like, yeah. there was a time where I wanted to try Holy Paladin for a little bit and have fun, but I didn't really want to ask my partners to queue with me as I'm playing Holy because I'm trying to practice. So if I had solo key, I could just practice alone. And when I'm good, I'll be like, hey, do you want to try? I practice a lot and then we can play, right? But I'll play with you. Yeah, I know you would, but <laughs> I don't want to like drag you down. I want to practice by myself yeah, no, and then play. I think a good thing to talk about is what the actual real world experience using solo queue would actually be because obviously it's all fun and games talking about how amazing it would be and how the rewards would be distributed and how much like all sure. the perks. but then in reality how is it actually going to play out because what's going to happen is a bunch of people that are there's a huge skill disparity between people you're going to queue up and you're going to think oh i'm this good and then it's going to mm -hmm. be a similar thing as like you know when you're stuck in elo hell in league you end up blaming your teammates <laughs> for the reason why you can't yeah, yeah, you're yeah, just frustrated and stuff like this. So what are your thoughts on how the actual game plan experience will pan out for people? It takes a very uh, small margin, like it takes a very small margin of winning over losing to actually rank up in these games. So a lot of the time when people say like, oh, they're stuck in ELO hell, it, realistically, they're just not as good as they think they are. Um, because yeah. if you're like, let's take Overwatch, for example, let's say you're a silver player in Overwatch. Like realistically, to promote to gold, you should be like carrying all the games against silver players, right? Or at least doing really, really well, like the top of your team. And if you are doing that, you are going to have a chance to slowly gain rating over time. That's going to be the same mm -hmm. thing in World of Warcraft. Of course, you're going to have losses um, if you, you know, you don't have the best composition, or maybe you're mashed up with someone that isn't necessarily as skilled as you, and maybe it is their fault. But 
if you're a really good player, like let's say you're Peekaboo, for example, and you're you're setting up kills for your team, you're nailing crowd control, like you just hit a beautiful smoke bomb that denied the heal, like you are going to be able to find those opportunities yeah. to win the game for your team and slowly advance in rating. That's all it all day he he does he, he carries people all day. You know, he's playing these 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 twos and he's just that's that's his content, is just outplaying people at a lower rating, you know, which so he he's already doing that. And I would say that in league, there's five people. In solo queue, there's three. And at lower ratings, people trinket air. They, you know, yeah. there's so many, there's so you many mistakes. Set up a kill you can, mm -hmm. you can capitalize on so many mistakes depending on your class. And, you know, some classes will be harder to climb, but I would also say that if you're a support, it's also harder to carry in league, right? If you're the, if you're the ADC or the mid lane or the top lane, it might be easier to carry. If you're the support and your team's not doing great, it's harder to carry, right? So depending on your role, it'll be harder to carry. But I, I, I really do feel like, yes, the, of course the player experience is going to be scuffed some games but it's already scuffed some games and what's better just not playing like is that really what we think just not playing because i was just saying this the other day it's like dude we're gonna stay around the new guys not the new guys are like yeah. screw you i'm gonna unsub and go play another game you know they're not gonna stay around like what are we trying to yeah. preserve as a community it's, it's almost I, I think I think the main thing Blizzard's scared about is I remember Helenka talking about it or like people bringing toxicity and I know in Overwatch there's a lot of toxic players out there but if they just don't let them queue for like I don't know maybe like five day and then ten day and then maybe a month if they keep being toxic right they're they're yeah, really they're afraid of like... people being toxic to each other and I know there's gonna be people like throwing on purpose or leaving the game but. That's like that happens in like every that. game. That happens in every game. They need to know that. And there, there are just going to be people out there that naturally does that, right? But it's more important to recognize that because they're going to say, well, it happens in every game, but we don't want it in our game. But that already happened. That already, already happens. You yeah. could already throw. You could. Already and they would benefit really more. They would benefit more from this than not adding it because of that. It already happens in WoW. People are already innately toxic in every way. You see, like That's true. You, you get whispers yeah, after I've games, spit video, out, you know, yeah. teabagging you. It happens to everybody, man. Yeah, it's there's, like... there's already going on. All right, well, yeah. that kind of like summarizes what the solo queue experience could be like for good players and the fact oh, that they yeah. will be able to break out. But what about for these players that are the ones that are leaving the game because they can't play and they're not, they haven't really had the time to hone their skills yet? What do we feel like the the solo queue experience would be like for these you know, less experienced players? Do you think that they're just going to be, you know, forever stuck, unable to climb because they're just like unable to improve? Or how do you think it would play out for the, the, the worst players? Well, well there, of course, there's going to be players that just never improve. In any game, that's going to happen, right? Like people who aren't like objectively looking at what they could do better. Like they're not, they're, they're just not willing to improve or they're not able to improve. So of course, that's going to happen. But it's going to give people an opportunity to actually, you know, to get better i i suppose it, it certainly can't get worse than it is right now where you can't even play the game at all um <laughs> so i think at the very least you'll have an opportunity to actually play uh the game which is pretty nice and uh, if you consistently play uh, chances are you're going to slowly get better over time um and also yeah i think a lot of people they just want to play they don't even care what rating they're at they just want to be able to play you know do the things that they're seeing on stream or they're seeing in youtube videos or they're watching at the awc because I think a lot of people, they'll, they'll watch these tournaments or they'll watch these streams, they'll get super hyped, uh, excited to try it out. But then when they log on, their experience isn't what they're seeing in these streams. Uh, their experience isn't what they're actually seeing in these tournaments. And they don't have an opportunity to even try. Yeah. Well, one, of the, uh, one of the arguments I've heard from Blizzard in the past is that, well, you have you have skirmishes. You can just queue skirmishes. That's solo queue. I've heard. I, I, I hate before. that. So I hate that so that? much. <laughs> I hate when people say that so much. That's my biggest pet peeve, dude. It's because there's no progression in it. There's no matchmaking, dude. Everyone wants the juice. I want to yeah. climb. You know, I want to see progression. There's like, that satisfaction of you climbing. Like people get addicted to that. I see like Stoopson and Bonnie stay up all day playing TFT because they want to research <laughs> amazing. Like I have that too. I could stay up all day playing Overwatch. I think Blizzard just doesn't know that how people strive for those little rewards. No, there's no way they don't know that. Like, I hope they know. I don't know, like man. Basic, you know, I, yeah, I don't think they know. They're like play skirmish. Like, why would you do it? 
a lot of people like that's the whole reason they do anything you know what i mean they work really hard at their job so they can get a raise they go yeah. to the gym mm-hmm. so they can bench press more you know what i mean okay like, here's the thing though i won't say name, but so they can run faster you're right me and me and Susie went to blizzcon and we got to talk <laughs> with the person and when we were talking about it he's like you guys have skirmishes what do you think of the brawl and we just got ignored. We got completely shut down from asking about these other questions. Yeah, I don't know if those are lawyer answers yeah. or like, <laughs> or if that's genuinely the understanding. Oh, no. But, but it's like There's, that's you, that's the idea. We have skirmishes. I have to believe that they don't think skirmishes are legitimate solo con. Like, maybe they do, but I I, I can't believe that that they think that's like yeah. satisfying solo content, especially because. More often than not, when you're queuing like a skirmish, like I'll queue skirmishes and people are like, why are you doing I that? See, like, yeah. I don't know. I can play. Like, I, I, <laughs> I, I used to what, start up my stream yeah. and do skirmishes too, man. Yeah. I'll do that at like the end of my stream while I'm just hanging out and asking questions or at the beginning and people are like, why are you doing this? It's like, well, I don't, I just want to play. Yeah, I would just um, want to play. It's watch so you unfair. Want, you it's you so unfair. You world quest? People that have <laughs> health, they can't do yeah. anything. That's a, yeah. that's a separate issue, by the way. That, I don't mm-hmm. know, maybe it's for a different video, but I, I feel like right yeah. now it's especially discouraging because of the gear disparity. Like I feel like the power creep on gear is just way too insane. Way too high. Yeah. Way high. It yeah. is ludicrous. Like I was watching. I know. I know it's bad, but sometimes you'll like you'll really be able to see. I was watching a team that they're made top eight in the AWC. Um, they were playing their alts. And the, I don't know whether they were like 205 item level on their mains, they're 3200 and they're losing at 2300. You, you just get I mean? like, rolled with no there's gear. There's a 900 rating difference in them uh, yeah. having good gear and not good gear. Uh, yeah. It's uh, actually it's, insane how yeah. that matters. Yeah. The base item level needs to be higher and the, the spirit, and that's why you need the PvP stat. I, I would yeah. totally agree with everything you're saying. You need the PvP stat so that you don't attract PvPers. You need to have a higher or, base item level. Elite gear does not need to be. 30 you know 30 item levels higher than the base item level it's ridiculous it could be but... literally three and people would still be happy like it, it, it I just you know want what i mean something a little juice just give me like you know give me a better weapon at 2400 we, uh, we need the wad, the be- they said they were going to do that though they said I hope that they did. yeah i like the one they said that they would do that i think these are the things they're like this is what we're talking about that's the barriers to entry because if that's what i'm experiencing i always say this dude like and that's what other players need to understand. Like it's it's on us, man. I, I genuinely believe that. Like it's on the the the, the high end community or the top end community to say like speak up about this. Yeah, the content creators need to speak up because we. I know we, most we, of them have teams too, and it's not a problem for them, but it's a big problem yeah. in the community. The sure. gearing, the gearing, getting in the game. We need these people to play the game. Like we need them. We meme on them, make fun of them. Like the the little they're dude. We. I was in a stream. I know this is we're tangenting, but I have to do this. I was in a stream, and I want you know whatever. And somebody went going in and said, "Hey, you know, I'm having troubles in LFG. I can't find any cues. This is a tournament player as well. Okay, C- competes. And they said, "Yeah, it's rough out there. You know, it's rough out there. But you know, back when I started, you know, I used to go to trade chat and do all these things. And we're, that's like when your grandpa tells you like." Yeah, I used to climb through the snow to get to school 10 years ago. You have no idea what it's like. It's like, dude, I hope it was hard back then. Does it mean it should be better now? Like, dude, if you're a competitive player, you're a tournament player, and somebody comes tells you that they can't play the game that you're competing in, and we have this prize pool thing going on, like and all the recent issues with it, dude, we want everybody in this thing. And that should be the first. If somebody tells you that, you don't want to hear that, that the game you play as a professional, and you want people to support you in your passion, and compete and you want them to be entertained and relate to the content that you're doing and they can't even play how do you expect viewership to go up interest to go up it's not even relatable i have no idea what i'm watching because i don't get to play why would i watch it i don't watch the mdi because i don't do mythic plus i can't relate i don't watch super bowl i can't relate football whatever so they need to be able to relate play and we need to support them in getting something done you know i can't yeah. wait two years for this to happen or at least improving the process right like we need to start talking about is solo queue no longer we shouldn't get solo queue it should be okay there's a real problem what's the best way about going about this right like that should be the how do we best do a solo queue system if it's going to be implemented not we don't want it because yeah we've already gone down this road of look at dude Mm -hmm. i'm just let me paint this last thing imagine wow with a system imagine like how many people would sub 
for the idea that it you would play WoW PvP all day. All day. Dude, just imagine that. Like, how would so many people would play? It'd be a new game. It would actually be a new game. It would be like League. Like, dude, let's all play WoW together. We can all just queue up. I bet you would just get so much more interest. Yes, it'll be a little toxic or whatever, but... It's worth yeah. it. They're a little toxic. It's worth it's it. It's worth it, especially if they monitor it. It's like, <clears throat> we kind of mentioned it at the beginning of today. It's exactly what you said. When you watch the AWC, and maybe it looks like WoW Arena is super fun, or you're watching a stream and it looks super fun, to actually, you know, go from watching that to playing that, the pro, it's a, it's in some, it's Everest. Like going up that mountain <laughs> is so hard. Whereas, you know, if you watch uh, a game of Counter Strike, you get really inspired by like some awesome plays that, you know, a team's making, or you're watching League, or whatever it is. The process to basically doing the same thing they're doing, it, it's so quick. You know what I mean? If you want to play Overwatch and you see some sick McCree popping off and you, now you want to go play McCree, you're immediately, you know, in that position where you can actually play the game. Of course, WoW is an MMORPG, but I feel like the barrier to entry just needs to be way smaller. And I think solo queue would be a, a huge, a huge benefit for people to actually just play. And I mean, that sound, it sounds ridiculous, but people just want to play the game. They just want to yes. play what they're seeing. Why there was a counter yeah. for all the people spinning around Oribos, man. Or Dalaran. There is. There there's no. a, there's is there a counter? I have it. I have the weak aura. I tr if there's a weak aura that tracks your laps in Oribos, something's wrong. Like, <laughs> the maw and all of that should be the least, like, just all of that should be, like, not what you ever want to do, right? Like, dude, mm -hmm. Wizard needs to. Or at least we should say maybe start with 6v6 RBG. I don't know. Is I'm that open a good to thing? whatever, like, you know. I'm open to it for Arena or RBG. Yeah. So there's reluctancy to do it for Arena, but I just think making solo PvP content is just super, super important. Um, there is one thing that Stoops mentioned before that we could maybe talk about. It's to do with the recent issues with coaching and all that stuff. The lack of a solo key system and the difficulty of finding partners indirectly promotes coaching. I think it's pretty relevant. I had I, I talked about it. Uh, I, wrote, I did a twit longer about it. I know it's kind of a hot take or... Uh, yeah. You know, not something that people want to discuss too much. I won't go like too in depth, but what I will say is that, you know, a lot of these people, uh, a lot of the audience that gets coaching, you know, they really are, you're, you're such at a disadvantage of playing the game with the way it is currently, right? You're under, under, you're not geared, you don't have the item level, you can't find cues because you don't have the item level and you don't have any of the achievements. And, you know, they're going to turn to something to just play the game, right? And that enables this type of like paid coaching. I feel like people say coaching and they're actually just boosting, boosting them to a certain rating for money. <laughs> and yeah, that, I, I don't think, know. I think that's a big thing is like, how do we, yeah. what what is coaching? Like yeah. exactly, or, or what is boosting exactly? Because right. I feel like at this point, everyone has different definitions and mm -hmm. there's a lot of different ways you can boost someone. I mean, uh, you know, it, I always use Peekaboo as an example, but is Peekaboo boosting? Like, is he boosting? Is he coaching? Like, what, what is he doing on his stream? Because at some level, um, he's just wanting to play the game, right? Right, right, he's right. Just wanting to have something. That, I think the reason why he does what he does, and I, I do it too, so I'm not calling him out. Right, right, right. Exact same yeah, thing, exactly. I literally just want to queue. I want to play <laughs> yeah. the game. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that playing at lower rating, I get faster queue times. I get yeah. more comp variety, which right. is more interesting. Um, whereas if like I want to queue up with my buddy Envious and we're 2,500, my experience is we either play against just one team and either we counter them or they counter us and then one of us stops playing and then there's no queues. Like that's basically yeah. what happens. So for me, the reason why I like doing viewer games is because I can just play. I can just play. Same. And I think like, we all. Rate, yeah, I think we all have that. Like solo queue when you're playing with viewers. It's, it's like super fun. You have a list yeah. of things. You just grab somebody and you go. Yeah, oh, let's play rep yeah. mage. Okay, we're gonna play warrior mage now. Let's see I think the thing work. is, um, going back to where you said playing with viewer, um, I like doing it too because some of them don't get the chance to play. Yeah. And when you play with them, some of them actually pop off, and I'm like, dude, you don't. Dude. Yeah. You shouldn't be in this rating because you're really good, but. His problem is he can't queue and he doesn't have a partner. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I do help if they're like achievable in that rating and they do deserve it. But yeah, 
I said this topic in the video where I was like, there could be a guy that has a lot of potential that just doesn't get the chance to play. Yeah. Right? There is, mm -hmm. I put a shaman and this dude was grounding Hodges. He was purging the divine favor, big heels. He right. knew when to go for the hex. He was 1600. I'm like, I literally said it on my stream at two streams ago. I said, you're the best 1600 player I've ever played with. <laughs> was insane. I was, I'm like, and I was telling people in my chat, everyone whisper this guy right now. He's on this server. Here's you all should play with him if you're around his rating he was the best healer i've ever played with in twos at 1600. insane what he was doing like i was like dude i thought i looked at his achievements i thought i was getting debated i was like what mm -hmm. there's no way but there's people out there that are really good and they probably get told they suck because the other guy sucks and then it's just this fiesta of like who leaves the group first and ultimately it's that's the point of solo queue it's gonna just solve all of these problems this guy will get found out because he will climb. He will carry the game. He's going to ground every right. He's going to dodge every yeah. deal and share it. And then he's going to be, he will get high rated. <laughs> he will get high for sure. <laughs> I, yeah. I think it's like what Quinn said. Quinn said the best players in the game right now are not the players up in the ladder. It might be like down there, but they don't even have people to play with. Like but some of them just- potential to do very Yeah, well. they have the potential to get better, but some of them don't even get to practice or even try it out. And, I think that sucks. Are there any extra points that you guys want to make? I will say this to end it. This is a serious topic, okay? This is something the community needs to be talking about to get players into PvP. It should be on everybody's mind. It should be something that we should be hounding Blizzard for. There's no reason why the LFG system has to be the way that it is. That is the tool that you use to do all of the end game content. Right? That is what you use to experience everything. 90% of the player base does that. There should be, and if you're, and if you are solely so against solo queue, but you still care about wild PVP, then you should be hounding Blizzard to give incentive to do PVP guilds or getting incentive to staying together as a group, maybe extra conquest or honor, or how can they improve the LFG tool? These are things that need to happen. No more extra stuff. Fix the stuff that's going on at the, like, fix the base. Because people can't even experience the good stuff in the game. What they're paying for, in my opinion, is just, you know, the Maw is not worth $15 a month. So, <laughs> PvP is, but the Maw is oh. not. So. The Maw is not. This is going to be a little controversial. Dissolve factions. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, I agree too. <laughs> yes. Agree. There's so many things that. What about with the release of Solo Q? Remove the faction oh, or. Yeah. If Solo Q lets you queue for faster queue times, you can do it for uh, 7 a.m. You can get queues. 5 a.m., 3 a.m. It would be 24 7. <laughs> At least for arenas. At least for arenas. I get There's RPGs no like a faction. For everything. More, but... Yeah. Okay. Everything. Okay. I was gonna like be on their side. Why they don't want to? But... The... I know. Trailer, man. Dude, I'm out in Shadowlands. I'm hanging out with Jaina and then, you know. Yeah. <laughs> You're actually Anduin. right. I'm trying to save I'm... Anduin and then I yeah. go to Stormwind and they're killing me. Like I don't get it. But yeah. There's yeah. already war mode feature. Like you turn it off and me and this dude are doing the same quest. He helps me kill the elite. Like how can I not do anything else with him in the game? It makes no sense like I, nobody cares i mean if you do care about factions that's great but come on dude like you can choose to not it oh, no. you want to, but it's it's just like come on dude there's a, there's so many things that I, could be done wait, this is very off topic but i did mention what if they make like a third race like you know how like argent dawn you could be horde and alliance what if they make yeah. that and people could join that so I'm people who want to be dawn faction dawn. yeah i'm going argent dawn too but some people like having like I'm Alliance or I'm Horde Pride, right? Yeah, well, so they could do that, and then we can join Argent Argent Crusade. In the oh. event last weekend at BlizzCon Line, they actually spoke about cross faction. Like, What'd they say? It, it's on their radar, and they understand that you know oh, wow. World of Warcraft is you know it's been out for 17 years or however long it's been, and uh, we're in a modern day, modern age. We need to adapt, and that is something that has been spoken about. And I think I wouldn't be surprised if we see it happen. Like, I think getting cross faction oh, wow. queuing is more likely to happen than solo queue right now without us obviously pushing for it. I actually think it's something that, that like, is more likely to happen. But that's the I point of the discussion. Yeah. That's, that's why it's a good topic to talk about. Exactly. Cause... And then if something like cross faction is willing to be put into the game, then I can't see a world in which solo queue shouldn't also be considered and implemented as well. How long has the game been out for? You said 17 years? Is that the exact? Something like that. I'm not can we just have fun at this point? I mean, what are we what are we holding on to? It's been great. Do you have these <laughs> coming out? Can we just have fun, dude? Just let us just let the strings fly. Just let things happen. Let's just let's just have fun. I don't think oh, anything bad happens from 
releasing the uh, faction. Does it? There's class you can go play. Class you can play BC. That you want to play the old game? Sure. No, no, no. I'm saying what? What are like the bad things that would happen if they remove faction? Just I, I don't know. Right? It's just for lore. Right, but the lore doesn't even make any sense anymore in Shadowlands. <laughs> yeah. you know, like everyone is doing the exact same quest. Everyone's doing the exact same objective. Yeah, like, yeah we're on the same side. We're I feel the same like city. we're we on the same the, side. We're still in the same city. We're all hanging out all the time. Yeah. Just but then in the book too, a, like we're not friends anymore. When you get into, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're not friends yeah. anymore. It really doesn't make any sense at this point. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like there still is major problems with like the faction imbalance, obviously. So that would help a lot with that. I'm just gonna say this because I got really annoyed with conduit energy yesterday. I like I like to play frost and I like to play fire, and I actually can't. I, the, I at most I can switch my spec every uh, two days because of conduit energy, unless I want to just play without conduits. But I really hate the idea uh, that you have to make two mages or two rep paladins to just play. Yeah. I think you should be able to just play. You should be able to change your spec. You should be able to, you know, you should only have to have one character. I hate the idea of alts if you want to play different specs or different. I just made my second warrior. I have a Venthyr warrior now. Because I was like, oh, I, dude, I got the Venthyr right. seems really good. I got, so I have two warriors now. And I just, <laughs> I, got, I just got to 222 last night. You know, that's why I was up late. You know, there's just like, in general i just think we need to stop being as a community so restrictive to like just these i think everyone's on board for that type of stuff but i just don't see legit what you know again for me what are we trying to preserve because the current game has been out we've done this we've been here what else is going to what's going to make wow pop off and that's what we're looking for right Everybody i don't get why they have that barrier off. though just because you go from like knife eight to Ventir, that's not gonna ruin any of the end game content i feel like like you still raid, no, you're still renaying. It doesn't change anything. I don't get why they have that. Ultimately, this whole conversation is just about removing the barrier to entry for everything. You know, being able to solo queue, being able to switch your covenant, <laughs> being able to switch your spec. Like you should Legendary. be restricted in your ability to play the game. You should be able to. Log especially with some of the. And enjoy the yeah, game. go for it. Go back. I know. I was just gonna say, especially with some of the new systems. Some of the new systems are actually fun to play with. Like. I like all the different covenant abilities. You know, it's cool that there's lots of different legendaries, but I don't get to use them. I don't get to actually play with all, you know, I want to play Night Fae on my mage. Maybe I want to try Necrolord, but do I really want to go and do all the, you know, the quests that aren't so fun and, you know, grind up my renown. And then if it turns out it's not good, okay, well, I guess I got to go back and do it again. It's just like, I want to try all these things they're coming up with and experiment, but I, I just can't. And I, I think that's just, it's just another one of those things. Like people just want to play the game. They just want to play the game. They want to try these systems. They want to try different classes. They want to play alts, but what they don't want to do is have to grind, you know, Venari rep on a bunch of different characters. You know, maybe doing, doing it that. once is okay, but you know, grind, you know, two hundred thousand honor if you want to play two dude. different characters. Like it's just it's too much. How many of you? A little off topic. On topic. How many of you guys would do Mythic Plus if there was a solo queue system? I would. Plus, I would do it. Yeah, if, yeah, if I could just farm, if I could just queue up for a dungeon, and then as I get you know faster and faster with the group, that I like, you might get chaffed a little bit, but then I start going up. I would be like, dude, I'm down to just do a dungeon. Just give them a IO rating. I mean, that's you why they made the IO. Yeah. Affixes, you have these, like you have all this stuff that you've created. You know, people say they don't care about PvP, but it's about the years of work they put into Arena. All the different maps, all the different mogs, all the different types. They've spent so much time. I hate when people say they don't care about PvP because, like, the reality is, if they cared about PvE too, we'd be getting more raids. There'd be you know, tier sets. There would be like just more dungeon. They would, they would really be more class changes in PvE. Some classes are awful in PvE still, right? So it's it's in general like people say it's just PvP, but it's not. You know, like the they the game is so broad, but there's all this good content that they've created that. There's just so many barriers to experience it. And what you're left with is that boring stuff, is those chores. And they create those to fill your time in the game. It's like, okay, well, we know they can't always raid. And we know they can't always do Mythic Plus. We know they always they can't always do Arena so, or RBGs. So what do they do in the meantime while they're looking? Screw all the meantime stuff. Let me do the real stuff. Like, I want my dessert. I want to do the good stuff. And that's what people buy the game for. Nobody buys the game for the other stuff. And if that's what their experience is, they're making a big mistake because the good stuff is fun, man. There's not that many speed running dungeon games out there. There's not many cool raid games out there. There's not many arena, there's no arena games out there. So yeah, I just think in general, 
you know, there's good stuff out there in the game that players aren't experiencing. And I feel like that should be the focus, at least in the next expansion and openly talked about now. Yeah. That always makes me a little bit bummed out when we say the next expansion because uh, I feel like this one just came out. You know, it's always, oh, and the next expansion, that's a, you know, a 10 0 problem. But there's nice. stuff that can be done in the meantime, though, right? Yeah. yeah I wish they would do that. Change it meantime like there's things that can be done but we're not gonna get there if the community is so split on stuff like i'm so tired of that like we're not gonna get anywhere because they're not, they're gonna be like well people don't want it some people don't want it you know we're not gonna get anywhere like for, for example classic and bc right like some people are like oh that's just nostalgia dude like it's not good you know so they were resistant on you you think you do but you don't okay some people don't like it some people do they created it anyway for the people that like it how it is that any different worried about vanilla taking away from retail or bc take away. no one cares about that anymore that's not the sky what about retail it's just gonna kill retail or hurt those players when people say it's gonna kill the, the latter it's like dude if people prefer to do something let them do it if, and if the latter if lfg actually dies because of solo queue or these types of systems then that goes to show you that there's something wrong with that system. yeah it shows you that it was bad consumers are choosing to do this so are we being selfish at this point because we're trying to preserve something or are we just letting it's about what people want to do you know and it's an option it's not mandatory these systems aren't mandatory like you know like your covenant campaign is so i do that <laughs> <laughs> I rant about this every day. I just, All you right. know, I'm so. Well, I think that's. Uh, yeah. I think that's a wrap. I think we covered everything pretty extensively. That's the wrap. Yeah, that's yeah. it. And yeah, hopefully this will continue to spur the discussion of us moving in the direction that we need the game to move into for it to prosper. For sure. And sorry for you know. I just I can't control myself sometimes, dude. I just, <laughs> I, I, I I really can't. It's, it's the it's, passion. It's the passion for the game. I don't say something and then the vein of my my head will pop like it'll, it'll, it'll i'm like i have to say something because i just get so upset about it dude i can't stand it i can't stand i mean just ben how often do people come in your chat and tell you like ben i can't i've been sitting in lfg for four hours today i can't find a group that sucks i don't want to yeah. hear that i want you to be like dude i just queued for three hours it was a blast or you queued for three hours and it sucked but at least you queued yeah at least you queued